What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Force Feedback Guide for Forza Motorsport. If you told me a few days ago that I'd be making a Force Feedback video for anything, I'd think you'd be crazy. However, I'm seeing a lot of videos and posts on Force Feedback settings that feel like absolute garbage, especially from YouTubers who have very strong followings who make content specifically for Forza or for sim racing, and I'm just baffled at how they could possibly think their settings feel good. Uh, there's one specific guy who drives a, uh, who actually races in real life, and uh, he he suggested turning a setting off that doesn't return the wheel to center, which is insane. Because if you've driven any vehicle with a steering wheel, you'd know that once the wheel is turned, as long as you're moving, it's going to return to center. So uh, I don't know what was going on there, but there are a lot of garbage settings out there. I'm not a force feedback guru. I I do sim race and I do it for fun. I'm not super competitive, but. I think I know what things are supposed to feel like and I did the research regarding each setting in the game and each setting in my wheels control panel and I think I have a pretty good understanding right now of how things work and I've been tweaking things uh, for the last few days since early access began. I've been tweaking more than I've been playing so uh, this is it. I am testing on everything on a Fanatec CSLDD with the 8 newton meter kit so if you have that these settings should be great for you. If you've got any feedback or if I'm explaining something wrong, please let me know because I'm also trying to understand how everything works. So, you know, let's try to figure out some good settings together because I honestly believe that this game has some pretty good force feedback uh, to my surprise and I think to a lot of other people's surprise. So it's surprisingly really good once you dial it in out of the box. It's absolutely horrible. Uh, so <laughs> let's all try to figure this out together. These are the Fanatec settings. Just a few notes about them. Regarding the sensitivity, you can change this. It should still map to each vehicle automatically. So I know a lot of people like to put it on 900 or 1080. If you do that, the each vehicle should map one to one. I haven't tested that too much, but I did test it with a few cars and it worked. Auto also works. It's mapping one to one in each vehicle that I drive. So uh, it shouldn't matter. Each vehicle also has its own setting within the game. So. You can always set it like that and each vehicle also has its own force feedback setting within the tuning pages which you can set individually as well and that's very important because these settings are going to vary from vehicle to vehicle a lot because there are so many vehicles in the game and no two should feel alike and i'm finding that that's actually the case so especially with the force feedback strength some are going to feel weak some are going to feel strong and unfortunately, we have no way of knowing whether it's clipping in game other than just feeling it. So keep that in mind. Uh, moving on, I have force feedback strength at 100. Again, you could change that in game as well and per vehicle. Force feedback scales at peak. The natural damper is at 15%. NFR, NIN, and INT are off. What you can do is set INT to a higher value if you find the force feedback to feel too raw or too harsh, I guess like piercing or rugged or it's just not you know not smooth enough for you you can you can put int on one just to smooth things out a little bit while keeping some fidelity i'm finding it to be okay so i have it off and the rest at 100 now i did have spr and dpr at zero percent but these two settings tie into some settings in game actually these these last four ties to settings in game so i kept them at 100 and i decreased these settings in game by a significant amount because I got used to playing without SPR and DPR on and it felt great with this game but I figured let me give it a little bit uh, for specific reasons that I'll get into in a little bit so those are the Fanatec settings so like I mentioned I took notes on each setting and I tried to kind of condense them so I can explain what's going on with each one from the way I understand it and yes, again if I have anything wrong please point it out to me and uh, that would be great because I'm also trying to learn as well. So here are the advanced input settings All of this stuff you pretty much want the way it is again the dead zones can reset You could set those to personal preference and where you want to start I'll scroll down because I don't want to waste anyone's time if you just want to copy the settings Go ahead and do it, but I'm going to explain what each one does and I think it's really important to understand that because Otherwise, you're just tweaking to you know for no reason uh, and it's good to, to increase and decrease things just by feel as well so what I did a lot is I would reduce something to zero, feel it, and then increase it all the way, and then feel it again and see what difference it made. So that's another way of testing what each thing does. But I do have some notes here. I'll try to be quick. I really just intended on this video being like, here are the settings, try them out, let me know. But I think, you know, since I did the research, I'll, I might as well share it with people. So you want to start with vibration scale. And this is a setting that's separate from 
the force feedback in the game. It's it's purely vibration. It vibrates as the tires lose grip. It also vibrates, I believe, as when the car shifts. So you get that little shunt when you shift, which is pretty cool. It communicates really well, but it feels to me like it could be kind of artificial, almost like a controller rumble, and it should not affect the road feel. So there are, you know, there's a road feel setting right here. Uh, there's also another thing that affects road feel. Uh, this doesn't affect that. However, let's get into here. I'll explain what I'm talking about real quick. And I've tweaked the audio settings just a tiny bit. Oh, man, of course it's raining. I t <laughs> Every time Rather's on random in this game, it's raining for some reason. Uh, but anyway, I've tweaked the audio settings a little bit so you can kind of hear what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the wheel in the next turn. Uh, probably more than I should to get the car to understeer and you'll hear the tires chirping. Now obviously you can't feel the force feedback through the video, but listen to the tires chirping here. So you should hear the tires chirping. Uh, I am feeling the wheel constantly like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like vibrate like that. So it kind of follows the pattern of the tires chirping. Another way to describe this vibration setting is when you slam on the brakes, if you have ABS, you, you can see the, the tack there kind of bouncing up and down when I do that. That's exactly how it's vibrating on the wheel. So it does give pretty good information regarding that. However, if this, the understeer in this game seems to be insane. Everything I've driven so far understeers heavily, and I'm sure that can be remedied through tuning. But because it understeers so much, when I'm turning here, I'm, I'm constantly understeering. At this very moment, I'm understeering. Especially because it's wet. You feel that vibration just constantly knocking on the wheel. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. So if that bothers you, go ahead and lower this setting a bit. Something else you could do is raise the the int in the Fanatec settings to kind of smooth it out or maybe add a little bit of damper. But I think reducing something is better than adding something to mask it. Uh, because then you're just adding so much information to the force feedback that you're going to end up clipping it. And if you're familiar with audio, if you've ever mixed audio or produced music or you know mastered audio, less is usually more. You, if you want, if you want to accentuate something, you attenuate the other. So I always feel like removing something is better than adding something on top of it to, to mask it. So I'm gonna go ahead and slam the brakes right here again, and notice the tachometer in the middle, the way it's bouncing. With each one of those bounces, the wheel vibrates. So that's the vibration setting. I think that one's important because, I mean, a lot of people turn this up, but I think it's better to turn it down. And if you find that you're just getting a ton of vibration, like knocking in the wheel, if you turn this down, that'll go away. If you turn it to zero, it should go away completely. Force feedback scale is the strength of the force feedback. So this is gonna depend on how strong of a wheel you have. If you've got like a proper DD and you know some insane wheel, you probably wanna turn it down. But if you've got a weaker wheel, even my eight new meter wheel is, pretty weak at 120. The default is 100, so I've gone ahead and turned it up to 120. But again, this varies per vehicle, and you can actually change it in the vehicle setting here under car and then tune car. If you go all the way to the right, you can change the steering lock of the vehicle and, and the force feedback scale. So you can do it on a per car basis, which is what I should be doing. However, I just haven't got that far in the game yet, so I'm just doing it through this setting. That's the strength. You can also change that in your wheel setting. Steering self-alignment. Now, somebody on YouTube who races in real life <laughs> said to put this at zero, but I'll show you what happens at zero real quick. And you should be able to tell because I'm in the cockpit and you can see the steering wheel. So now that person, I believe has a, mentioned he had a Moza wheel. So that could work differently. But basically with that setting at zero, and he really emphasized to keep it at zero, person pretty much said you're an idiot if you don't. If I turn the wheel, it doesn't return. So I, my hand is not on the wheel right now. Right now, it's not on the wheel. It never returned. So you have absolutely zero, zero return. It'll just stay turned forever, no matter what's going on in the vehicle. So you definitely don't want to turn that off uh, unless you've got a wheel that has that forces, you know, a steering return. That's the only reason I could I can really think of to keep that at zero. So definitely keep that on. This setting specifically affects this, the two settings below it. So mechanical trail and pneumatic trail are affected by the steering self-alignment. Uh, so it's basically like um, if you have these two, you know, pretend these two are in a group and this is adjusting its overall level of the group. So mechanical scale, 
This has to do with suspension geometry, and the higher it's turned up, the more the wheels are going to turn in the direction of travel. So if you're turning right, this is going to sort of keep the wheel turned right. So you get less of an understeering or a tire slip feel, which is kind of big in this game because the understeer is insane so far. It's really good for drifting, but it'll, you know, like I just mentioned, it's going to emphasize lockup, tire lockup, and understeer. So great for drifting, and I think it's good overall. I may experiment with turning it down a little bit because everything seems to understeer in this game, and you don't really need that sensation to be, you know, overly accentuated, but... Uh, I think at 97, it feels pretty good right now. Like I said, I might lower it a bit depending on how crazy the vehicles I end up driving is understeering. Pneumatic trail has to do with tire contact on the ground and tire deformation. So with, with tire slip, it decreases, which allows you to feel understeer and brake lockup again. So another setting that accentuates understeer, and you could really feel it on the wheel with these settings. You could really feel the understeer. Like I mentioned, it felt like I was understeering through every turn, so... I may experiment with reducing these settings if the vehicles I end up driving are very strong with the understeer. And this is a dynamic setting, so it's going to rise and fall dynamically, and it can actually result in a sharp, a sharp sensation at the edge of traction. So when you're losing traction, you may get like a, a sharp, you know, spike of force feedback to to let you know that's happening. The road scale feel has to do uh, with higher frequencies in the wheel. So again, another audio. Analogy, if, you, if you're not familiar with audio, it's not going to help out, but force feedback is a lot like audio, so you've got low, mid, and high frequencies. This has to do with high frequencies, which I guess I can describe by saying they're not very heavy. You know, they're, they're kind of lighter frequencies and more intricate frequencies. This should not affect low frequencies as you turn it up, according to uh, turn 10, so uh, it shouldn't drown out the lows or it shouldn't clip the lows. Uh, I guess I'll take their word on that. <laughs> But I've gone ahead and decreased it anyway. A lot of people are increasing this because it also increases the sensation of the curbs on the track without affecting the aligning torque. So when you go over a curb in this game, I found it to be pretty inconsistent. Some of them are you can definitely feel, some you don't really feel. Uh, so and, and this seems to be a common complaint. A lot of people are turning the road feel up, but I found that that has unnecessary an unnecessary effect on the actual track feel so as you're going you know as you're on their main track so I'm just driving straight here it almost feels like there's dirt on the track with the road feel too high up or there's gravel on the track and I didn't personally like that if you don't mind that you can turn it up and to be honest at this setting I could feel the curbs again some are I'm all over the place but some are some are stronger than others. I can feel this one. It's not too strong. But again, like, I don't know these tracks in real life. Not every curb is going to be like a rumble strip at the edge of a highway, you know? So, <laughs> I'm not sure what these curbs feel like in real life because I have not raced at Suzuka. But I can definitely feel them in the game. And I can definitely hear them in the game. I think, you know, you should definitely be listening for them. But you can also feel them at the setting. So, I'm not concerned with it. Also, if I go over, like, a bump, some of these, you know, some tracks have those bumps around the corners. Uh, you can definitely feel that, so the information that you need is, is there with this setting as it is. I don't think it's necessary to turn it up too high, unless you don't mind that grainy, gravelly feel when you're on a clean track. So up next, we have a load sensitivity, and this affects the medium frequencies. So back to the frequencies, we got low, medium, and high. This affects the medium frequencies that come from road oscillations and bounces. So lowering this setting can make the wheel feel smoother overall, but you're going to lose some fidelity. So... I don't mind the fidelity, I don't mind it feeling a bit rough, but if you do lower this, it should smooth things out a bit, but you're going to lose a little bit of communication with what the car is doing, so I kept it fairly high here at 58. Now, wheel damping is going to be really subjective because it's going to depend on the type of wheel you have again, and I'll explain in a second, and it's also going to depend on personal preference, so the wheel damping is sort of how heavy the wheel feels. So, for an example, if you want to drift, if you're a drifter, you don't want too much damping because the wheels is going to feel heavy. It's not going to be easy to make quick turns and quick movements. So you definitely want to avoid that. If you're driving like an oval or something, I guess damping would be good in that case because it's sort of going to stabilize it. So stabilization is another way of, of thinking about it. If you've ever had like a damper on a motorcycle in real life, like a stabilizer, you know, kind of know what that feels. But, you know, these aren't bikes, so it's a little bit different. But like I mentioned, it's just, it's specific to wheels. If you've got a wheel like a Logitech wheel, you generally don't need damping or you want to keep it very low. 
if you have a higher torque wheel, damping can actually be pretty beneficial. But again, it's a subjective thing. So it's a personal preference type of thing. Something that this ties into is back again in the control panel. This damper affects strength. I actually had it off while I was doing most of this testing. And I was adjusting this, but it was doing absolutely nothing because this was off. So if you don't want any damper at all, you can turn it off here because this setting directly ties with this DPR setting at the bottom. But what I've done is I've, I've gone and put it back at 100 and I introduced just a tiny bit just for some ever so slight stabilization. It also kind of helps filter out some of the harsher frequencies and just make things a little bit smoother overall. So just a tiny bit of damping I think is pretty good. But too much and the wheel just gets way too stiff. I've seen people turn this up and the wheel's just way too stiff. It's difficult to turn left and right. And what I think people are confusing that with is stronger force feedback. So that that's definitely not stronger force feedback. You're just making the wheel harder to turn for yourself and you're making the car feel less nimble. It almost feels like you're driving a much heavier vehicle. So if the force feedback is not strong enough, just adjust it up here. Just adjust the, the force feedback control, the, the scale here. And that's going to actually give you stronger force feedback while not affecting the below settings and not making it feel like you're, you know, driving a boat instead of a, an open wheel car. <laughs> so center spring, this setting ties again directly into this SPR spring effect on the Fanatec control panel. So I did have this at zero as well. I had these bottom two at zero while I was doing most of this testing and I was adjusting the center spring. I was like, this doesn't really feel like it's doing much. But I still had a setting for it anyway. I guess there was a little bit of placebo going on. And, you know, it, it did nothing because I had this at zero. So I put this back again at 100, just like damper. And I've introduced just a tiny bit. What this does is it will pull the wheel towards the center. So, you know, as you have the car turned, as you're going down the track, the wheel is going to naturally want to pull towards the center with momentum, right? So, you know, if I'm turning the wheel, I let go. It's going towards the center. And a side note here, you'll notice my steering wheel going crazy. I'm not touching it right now. The damper can definitely uh, remedy that. So a lot of people measure, like, they'll gauge, like, how well their force feedback is depending on that. Or some people, rather. Uh, and people don't want that. They don't want the wheel to go haywire if they're not touching it like this. But I'll take it over having a wheel that feels way too heavy for the vehicle I'm driving. It just doesn't make sense. Another thing about damping before we move on to the center spring is when you're completely stopped and you turn the wheel, the wheel's going to feel very light with the way I have my settings. But if you increase the damper, it's going to make it feel like like a car actually feels in real life, depending on whether you have power steering or not. So this is kind of like I have power steering, <laughs> but on cars that don't. And, you know, if you've ever turned a car uh, wheel without power steering, when you're not moving, it's very difficult to turn the wheel. A damper could give you that effect, but again, it's going to affect your entire driving and I'd rather have a, l a light wheel when I'm stopped and proper force feedback while I'm driving than heavy damper stopped and, you know, just for that effect. But anyway, back to the centering spring and I'm going to try to wrap this up real quick because we're getting towards the end and I'm starting to ramble to the point that my throat is hurting. Uh, but centering spring, this is going to center the wheel as you're going through turns. So just like in real life, you know, if you... You're going through a turn, you let go of the wheel, it's going to center it. That's great. You want that. But if you raise that too much, you're going to lose fidelity in the force feedback. And it's going to give you a false sense of strong force feedback again, just like damping. So again, you can achieve this by increasing the force feedback scale or even increasing some of the other settings instead of increasing like damping or, or center spring. Because all that's going to do is when you're mid-turn and your wheel is turned, you're going to lose the fidelity of the tires losing grip of the suspension travel you're going to lose all that fidelity in exchange for the wheel centering itself and all it's going to do is it's just going to be fighting you to center itself and you're going to lose all of that fidelity so you want to keep this low the wheel still centers itself just fine and it's going to do so even more if you increase the overall force feedback turn 10 recommends leaving this setting alone the center spring or turning it down so i've turned it down finally the dynamic damper behavior it just reduces the damper as a tire slide to preserve fidelity so if you do use more of a damper here like for this it's it's not very important because we're not using much damper with these settings but if you've got a strong damper this is going to make it more dynamic so as you lower it it's going to be more linear and it's going to reduce the damper less as the tires slip so if this setting is low and your main damper setting is high when your tires slip it's not going to really adjust it dynamically if this is high up 
and you have a higher damper, as your tires slip, it's going to reduce the damper so you can feel the slip of the tires. So I think that's about it. Those are my settings. Go ahead and give them a shot. I hope it helps somebody out. Again, I'm using a CSLDD 8NM, 8 nm meter version. And these settings have felt great. You're going to have to adjust them. Um, you're not going to have to adjust them all per vehicle, but you may have to make some adjustments because there's so many vehicles in the game. And, of course, the main thing that you're going to have to adjust is the overall force feedback strength. And that, of course, can be found in the vehicle's tuning settings, like I mentioned before. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to answer them. Maybe I'll be making more videos in the future. And what I definitely need to do is check my Assetto Corsa settings because I've been relying on other people. And <laughs> who knows how I've been doing in that game. But uh, I think I get a little bit more out of it now that I understand how things work. If I got anything wrong, please let me know because, like I mentioned, I'm trying to figure this out myself as well. All right. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Peace.